play different. Greetings fellow Mac addicts. In this video we're looking at Sky Shadow from Patrick Buckland, a surprisingly complex horizontal shooter inspired by the likes of Defender and Scramble. On the Macintosh, Buckland was most known for Crystal Quest, but this game is also well worth checking out. So let's dive in shall we? Yes, let's shall. So we pilot the ship with our mouse in each of the three levels. We can shoot, drop bombs and use smart bombs. We can also warp if we need to speed up or to get out of a sticky situation quickly. Each level is a looping piece of terrain. This is because a primary focus of the game is bombing runs. Some targets are worth more than others. For example, the highest scoring area is the enemy landing strip which is just before your home city. Of course you have to make sure you don't accidentally bomb your own city or base. There is also a home base where you can land and do some repairs and cash in some bonus points. Now there is a player score and a ship score and this is important. The ship score is how many points you've gotten with that one life. Should your ship score reach 100,000, you enter Mega Mode. This is where the real game is according to Buckland and everything else is just working towards this. Your speed is doubled but every other form of scoring is multiplied by 10. This allows you to rack up massive points and this is very much a score driven game. In fact the only way to reach the second and third levels is to earn quite high scores. And it's these high thrill moments that really make Sky Shadow an enjoyable experience. Not only Mega Mode, but also doing a high value bomb run when surrounded by enemies. And each level has a little trench run. A very high value target in an area that's tricky to navigate. It's quite exhilarating putting this off. And even more so if you manage to do it in Mega Mode. The repetition of each level adds to this. You'll memorize where all the high value targets are and master the techniques of taking them out so that eventually you're just soaring over the levels racking up points. While, of course, dealing with the enemies the game throws at you. For the most part, enemies are just there to get in your way and make sure that you keep moving around. They move too fast and you move too slowly to really tackle them consistently. It's much better to just focus on bombing runs and staying alive long enough to land at your base and recharge. The one exception are the streamers. These are literally just lines that run across the screen, but they can only be destroyed via smart bombs and are very deadly if you touch them. And of course, they always seem to block the screen at the least convenient locations. They should have been called steamers because they are a steaming pile of there are power-ups of course, but it's mostly standard fare. But should you collect a bunch while you're in mega mode, you're gonna get a mega, mega score. When you take damage you lose shields, but that's not all that can happen. Your systems can also become damaged. There are three systems, one controls movement, one controls shooting and the other controls bombs. And should they become damaged, you'll have trouble flying straight and dropping bombs and shooting consistently. They can repair over time, but your best bet is either to get lucky enough to find a healing power up or just land back at home base and do some repairs. I was quite impressed by this mechanic because I don't recall ever seeing it in an arcade game before this. Buckland even believes it was in the original 1982 Liberator version of the game. When I asked him why he put this mechanic in, he said it was mainly to add another reason for landing i.e. repairing, and also to make taking damage mean something, as instant death would have been far too mean, but just losing shields would have also been a bit dry. I need to mention that I really love the aesthetic of this game. The garish colours and the strange structures and ship designs really give a fantastical alien feel. The audio is also quite fun, you may recognise some sounds from the Crystal games. And like Buckland's other games, there is a captivating surreal sense of humour. There is quite an interesting story behind the development of Sky Shadow. Technically, it's Buckland's first commercial game. Just before heading to university in 1982, Buckland sent an Apple II version of the game to a publisher, although it was called Liberator and not Sky Shadow. Unfortunately, the publisher failed to do a copyright check, and Atari sent a cease and desist since they've already released a game called Liberator. And instead of doing something logical, like, say, changing the name of the game, the publisher just burned all the copies and Buckland only found out when he asked about royalties. And so when it came time to release a follow up to Crystal Quest, Buckland decided to liberate Liberator from obscurity and resurrected it as Sky Shadow. 
As a very special bonus, Buckland has provided a scan of what he calls his most treasured work-related possession, the graph paper on which he drew out the landscape for Liberator by hand, and then typed in the hex of each pixel by hand to create the original graphics. Sky Shadow is not nearly as well remembered as Crystal Quest, and when I first played it, it seemed like an average clunky shooter. It seemed obvious why it wasn't as popular, and I almost dismissed it. But I stuck with it and learned how to actually play the game, and now I really, really love it. One thing you have to understand, and something that may have put off many players, is that this is an arcade game with a learning curve. You pretty much have to read the instructions, which is a rarity even in arcade games today. But not only is it complex for an arcade game, it's also just as brutally difficult, if not more so, than your average shooter. Even Buckland himself admits that he wasn't sure what he was thinking when he made it so hard. The result of this is that it's a very love it or hate it game. But if you give it enough time, you may just fall into the love crowd. And that, my dear viewers, is Sky Shadow.